recording right now? I think I am. I don't even know what this is. What's it about? Oh, I'm supposed to hold it to record. Hello and welcome to Lunch Therapy Interview Friday. I am the bat and I just wanted to say that uh, it is International Bat Month for those of you that don't know. So if you want to buy me a present, that's perfectly okay. And uh, I don't know what International Bat Month means. Uh, I haven't noticed any difference. I don't know. Has, have you noticed any difference, Walter? This is my friend, Walter. He's, uh, he's having his lunch now, so. Walter, oh, he's stuffing his little, little bat gullet with their, some kind of uh, apples or something. Um, get, can you get, can you get Walter a, a pumpkin or something, Bonnie? Anyway, um, so International Bat Month. One of the things that really bugs bugs me is that uh, actors a lot of times dress up like bats. And they get all brooding and they're so upset and they're sitting in their bat caves and all that stuff. And, you know, actually, bats are very fun. They're not brooding. They're very comical, sometimes uh, in a kind of a deadpan way. And so that's why I think sometimes people think that are so serious because we're doing deadpan comedy. You know, actually, Steve Carell, the famous uh, human actor, he was taught by a bat. I don't know if anybody knows that, but uh, now you do. Now you know. And uh, if he would just stick to the comedies, maybe, uh, you know, make a movie of The Office or, or maybe, you know, 55-year-old virgin or something like that, that would be great because I'm getting kind of tired of him playing like, you know, the therapist to a serial killer or, or maybe the dad of a a poor kid that's having trouble with drugs or something like that. It's no, I, I go back to the comedy, Steve. That's what I'm saying to you. Don't worry about it. Just, just dive back in. So anyway, I just want to say also to when you refer to this month, say Rocktober for the entire month, except for today. Today, because we have the guest, Roxanne Beckford, you will say Rocktober. I know, it's kind of fun, isn't it? It's so hard to say, Rockstober. <laughs> you know, I'm very schooled in the, very, the linguistics, so it's very easy for me to say, but you might find it difficult, but just make sure that you say it, because that is what we're doing today, and if you don't say it, who knows what, what could happen? You know, something bad could happen, but no, this is lunch therapy where nothing bad happens. So let's get on with the show. Welcome to Roxanne Beckford's interview Rockstober Lunch Therapy. There's too many names for this show. I don't I don't know. Oh everyone. Welcome to Lunch Therapy. I have uh behind me I have a hummingbird from Guinell. I hope that uh, everybody's doing well out there. We've got a great guest, as the bat says. We've got a great guest today. We've got Roxanne Beckford, who's an actor and uh, just a really fun person. And Howard Aronin is here. Holy, happy Rockstober to you all. Uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, do what the bat says. I seem to have a bird in my ear. Uh, look at a little bird in my ear. You know, the bird is telling me that it's time to breathe. Uh, welcome to Interview Friday, Lunch Therapy. <sighs> oh, good. Floss, you seem to be um, fiddling with some uh, lights. Is that what you're doing? Are you? Did you know you were going to come yeah, on the show uh, today? Well, I didn't know uh, uh, what we were, I, I was working on the other side. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I know. Hey, um, I'd like to ask you something. You know that film at the very beginning of the show? 
I didn't know I didn't know that you were a uh, a micro filmmaker. When did you take up that career? I don't, I don't want to say that I'm a, you know, a filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, per se, because of all the you know the, the people that are actual filmmakers. Yeah. But um, I like to dabble with a little bit of a uh, a little bit of the arts, you know, a little bit of the film. The dark arts, like perhaps. To, uh, it seemed like a kind of yeah, a dark, yeah. like introspective. I like the way the beginning of the thing. You're just like, how does this thing work? That was cool. <laughs> you know, I like to say so, that. So, so uh, I don't know if you could uh, um, understand the full concept. It's, it's one of those ones where uh, you take from it what you get. You know, what, what you what you perceive. Right. You don't have any preconceived notion of what it means. And then I then have my own, I have like total space to have my own notion of what it means or doesn't mean. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. My son yeah. watched it uh, a few days ago. Yeah. And after watching it, I looked at it, I looked toward, you know, I was sitting down, he was standing up. I looked towards him. I go, I, what, do you, what do you think? What, what, how does it make you feel? Uh -huh. And he goes, you look high. See, that's what he saw in it. Have you heard of that exhibit they did where there were all the paintings were just different sizes, but the canvas was just black? And people went to see the show, really? and they, you know, some really? people it's would a, wait, see... It's a, 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 a gallery show, right? A gallery show full of paintings. All of them are just flat black. And different people sizes, saw all kinds of shit in there, like nuns and, uh, you know, whatever psychological... I don't know, mess they had showed up on the canvas. Yeah, they, well, they, they swore they that they saw them, things right? in the canvas. That's like, that's like, like, you know, when you look at clouds yeah. and you see certain things and other people start, you're like, oh, do you see that face right there? And people go, yeah. no, but I see a bicycle. Yeah. Oh, it's like a Rorschach like test, right? It's like a Rorschach. This was like a giant Rorschach test. But who knew? Rorschach. Everything, that's everything. The, the Rorschach test is the inkblot test, right? It's like the inkblot test, yeah, where they just show you. Ugh. Yeah. And you have to come up with something. They're and they're like, wow, you're really messed you up. Say, My mother's spanking me. My mother's spanking me. Exactly. Spanking. That's what I, I just say it for everyone. And that really screws them up. Because, you know, yeah, that's kind of bluff. when you go see a therapist, the goal is to make them feel crazy, right? That's the goal. Well, if you don't, why are you there? You know what I mean? You have to make it difficult for them to figure out who you are. And it's not necessarily that you're trying, but you're sharing that, in that hour you're with them. You're sharing what you're feeling right now, what you're going through, you know, what your space in your head is. And it's for them to like chop it all up and put it together. It's like a challenge. Hey, figure this shit out. And then you just start giving them like dead ends to go down, you know, and it's just a game. Put it together, know? put it together and tell me who I am. Who am I? What do you think about that? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I have a buddy, right? Mm -hmm. When he goes to the therapist, yeah. he pretty much, you know, he pretty much does his one man show. He just kind of really? works on it. It's like a workshop for him. Our guest today had a one one woman show. Did you know about that? Yes. Is that I right? want to hear about Is that, that right? totally. Yeah, because that's, you know, that takes some guts to get out there on the stage for an hour, a couple hours, and just lay it all out there for people. I want to hear yeah, about yeah. that. And, and when you do shows like that, like one man shows, yeah. uh, one person show, actually, yeah. uh, Usually it's it's close to you. It's personal, you know. It has uh, to be, it, right? Like, yeah. I, I, it can't I be like when you go to the therapist. Sharing, yeah. Yeah, you know, when you're sharing on a one-person show, you're you're trying to tell them about who you are and share your humor with them and your experiences and you know what I mean. And you're trying to put it all together in a through-line story. So you know, most of them are personal. Uh, with and some some people like comedians or actors they put some drama in there they put some comedy in there in order to convey their story yep. uh i think one of the best one person shows i've ever seen uh, uh, is don reed don reed has a fantastic one the comedian don reed he has a wonderful show wonderful show everybody who's ever watched it brags about how great it is he's just a, a super talented guy john uh Leguizamo too oh he does. man his uh that last one last one he did yeah. about the, the on latin Netflix. history Oh, Netflix. so good. Yeah, so good. So good. All right, let's do a, let's do a breathing Let's get some here. breathing. Yeah. Let's, let's I got another breathe. hummingbird um, video from Guignel that we're going to breathe to. Let's move into it. Oh, look at that. You're up there with the, with the hummingbirds. I'm going to put you like right, like on the stone wall there. Okay. Do you want to do the uh, honors of the breathing? Yes, let's breathe. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. You lead it. In through the nose, out through the toes, deep breath. Hold it. Let it go. You like to hold it for a long time, don't you? You're one of those people. It, it kind of settles, settling. Gets the oxygen All right, here we going. go. One more. Here we, All right. We're going to do two more. This is the second one. Okay. Uh, in through the nose. Hold it. Let it go. <sighs> out through the toes, out through the toes. Drop your shoulders, drop your shoulders. I feel lighter already. I feel pretty good. Okay. This is the last one. This is the third one. And through the yeah. nose. Hold it. Let it go. Let your shoulders drop. Let your shoulders drop. Relax. Oh, I feel so good. I'm, I'm swaying. Really swaying like a tree. And, I do. I, I, I enjoy that. So it's uh, like a comforting. Tree. I learned that from the bat. He does that. He hangs upside down. He just sways back and forth. And he, he just gets, sways back and forth? He gets into like a trance state. Probably, yeah. Probably because all the blood's rushing to his head. Right. But they're used to that. Bats, they're used to that. Yeah. They're built He's just swishing it around a little. Yeah. All right. Let's get into this thing. Yeah. I want to show you something first that is just, I mean, I just got me laughing. Uh, you know, uh, one of our guests who's been on the show multiple times, Tom Kearney, this is him ah. here in his home studio. He's been doing a lot of voiceovers. And I know our guest today, Roxanne Beckford, she also has done a lot of uh, voiceovers as well. She's in Diablo 3, I notice. Uh, Diablo. Diablo. Diablo 3. Uh, that actually means devil, you know, right? Uh, no, right? Diablo means devil. Oh, devil. Okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. it meant devil. So um, Tom yeah. Kearney, there he is in the middle. He's doing his... I feel like he, he's in the middle of something. I feel, he's, he's saying something. Well, you know what he's doing? He's doing a voiceover. He's looking at his teleprompter. He's got the, I don't know, people on, on some kind of conference call. He's got a special direct line that's very clean, and he's in his home studio. This is the way they do it now. You that makes right sense. Your house, right? Yeah, I didn't realize it. I, I thought that he was just turning away from the computer to address something but well i, see what you're I feel he's like shooting himself yeah he's just he's doing it he's doing it so he was doing a voiceover and um so this is the first of a series called tom kearney voiceover lessons this is voiceover lesson one and we're just going to see him kind of in action here like all right it. get ready On the 11th hour, on the 11th day, on the 11th month. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are you guys doing to me? On the 11th hour, on the 11th day, on the 11th month. We see veterans who've made commitments and That's sacrifices good. to answer the call to serve our nation. <clears throat> on the 11th hour, on the 11th day. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. On the <laughs> fuck. On the eleventh hour. On the eleventh day. <laughs> He's like losing it. <laughs> it's a serious piece, too, right? It's talking oh, about veterans. Oh yeah, it's a very serious piece, and he's just losing it. <laughs> People are on the line. <laughs> oh fuck! Okay, here we go. Eleventh <laughs> month. Just cracks me up. Okay. It's <laughs> trying to pull it together. On the eleventh, on the eleventh hour, on the eleventh hour, on the eleventh day, on the eleventh month. <laughs> what was that squeak? I don't know. He like can't handle it. Oh. On the eleventh, on the eleventh hour, on the eleventh day. Okay, we see our veterans who have made. We yeah, he finally, he finally. I think he got through it. But Holy have you ever had that shit. where you just can't stop laughing? I haven't had that maybe since oh high school. 
where I just could not. Oh my supplement. God. No, dude. I, I, uh, yeah, absolutely. I've been through that. I, I was in an audition that happened before. Really? I just couldn't, I couldn't settle down. Yeah. I mean, I did eventually settle down and I actually think I kind of pulled it off, but I mean, I mean, you know, three minutes, two minutes of that, not getting your shit together. You know what I mean? It had to have been, you know, uh, discouraging. You know? Oh my like God. The, people's, the look on the people's faces, they're like, they're excited to see you and you're ready to go. And then you kind of laugh, giggle a little bit and then you start laughing and control and then, then someone goes, are you all right? And you're like, yeah, <laughs> just give me a second. Give me a second. All right. And then their faces would go from this, they go from this to, to and this. And then they're they starting there. to get pissed. Then they're like, uh, we only have so what's much up, time here, with, pal. What's up with this guy? What's up with this guy? We, we can't do that. Anyway, that was funny. Do you remember that uh, uh, Mary Tyler Moore show where she was at the uh, Chuckles the Clown? Oh, oh, the funeral. Remember that, the, the funeral. funeral? And she couldn't stop yeah, laughing? Yeah, 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 where they start giggling and they start little, laughing. I got a little clip that maybe we'll just say like a second on it. Oh, that's such a, that's one of the best scenes in time. It's a funeral for the clown of the Billy station. Billy Banana. And my particular favorite, Aunt Yuhu. <laughs> she starts laughing at the funeral. Oh, shit. <laughs> and not just, <laughs> not just for the laughter that they provided. There was always some deeper meaning to whatever Chuckles did. <laughs> oh, oh. Look at it. Show anguish. It's like a classic scene. Mr. Fee Fi Fo's little little catchphrase. You remember how when his arch rival Senor Kaboom hit him with a giant cucumber and knocked him down? Mr. Fee Fi Fo would always pick himself up. <laughs> anyway, I can't show the, too the, much of the, that. The, I can't show the much priest of that. Is, the priest is great. He's yeah. right in there. On the 11th hour. On the, on the 11th. Yeah. <laughs> on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th. I wonder what cracked him up so much. It's just, he's like, because at the beginning, he's like, Jesus, what are you doing to me, guys? Yeah. Uh, like, I didn't know if he was, maybe, maybe it's the script. The 11th yeah. hour, 11th day, like the, the you know what I mean? The, 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 the but is that hard to say? It's not like it's hard to say or anything. I don't no, know. I, it's I, just I just funny. Think, you know, and, and also, like, I didn't couldn't tell if he was in a booth with the with the producer or if he's doing it the self tape. You know, what I mean? think he's doing it because like when he over said, "What the... are you doing to me, guys?" Like, if he's being distracted. By I asked him, and he said that they were like on a live line with the you know with the client, oh. and he's saying the thing. It had it, it had to be the script, and like the way he was reading it, and the way he was you know, it's like what uh, Jesus, what are you doing to me, guys? Anyway. Yeah, like all right. I wanted to share that. I don't know. Maybe Roxanne has had this. You, I, I like talking about her. Like she's, you know, not here, but she's here with Boney. Boney's uh, oh, oh, showing her the different yeah. chakras. Boney, come on. Boney's trying to show her different chakras, and I don't know. He's, Why he's, is he showing her chakras? He's not supposed to look the talent in the stuff. eye. I mean, he's really supposed to just, yeah. you know, do his dude, job. He's getting kind of rocky. He's getting kind of rocky. I'm telling you. He always gets to too familiar with the with the guest, and I'm afraid like one time he's gonna like step over the line. You know? But haven't you oh, haven't you noticed it though that it's it's more with like attractive people? I know. You that yet? I know. It's the attractive ones. I mean, we've had some unattractive. I mean, you know, some unattractive. No <laughs> you know, if you're unattractive. Wait a minute. We have but not had any as, unattractive guests on this show. We're no, not I'm just saying. No. Well, wait a minute. I'm not, I don't point any fingers. Floss I mean, Lorenzo? You know who, is that who you're you know, talking you about? You know who you are. You know who you are. I mean, you look at yourself every day in the mirror. So you know who you uh, are. No. Lunch therapy. All, Hundreds of down. attractive I mean, guests and one ugly one. <laughs> no. It's a strip joint model, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, totally. That's what it is. All right, let's get this going. Three ugly ones. It's starting to go into the gutter here. All right, let's get into this. We're going to get Roxanne Beckford on the show. It's interview Friday. Ah. I'll see you uh, later on the show, Blas. Wish go me luck. Him. Go get him. Come on, have fun. I hear she's like a fire, you know, like a cannon. But here we go. Here we go. Roxanne Beckford. Roxanne Beckford, yeah. I like it, you know. Oftentimes we get people on the show and they're like doing something when I bring them on, but you're dancing. 
<laughs> well, I, I had to live up to the firecracker thing, and I didn't know how else I to know. convey it. I said you were a cannon, even. More than a firecracker, like a, yeah, like wow. a full-on cannon. That's what, you know, Bloss was like, good luck, man, good luck. I don't know. She is really, she might overpower the show. We might even, sometimes what happens is there's so much power on the show that YouTube just shuts it down because it, they can't well, handle it. I am a shy, retiring wallflower. On you the are. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. Well, welcome. Welcome to the show, shy wallflower. Uh, Shy wallflower. Is that your... Uh... And thank you for Rocktober. Oh, certainly. Um, let's see if anybody blows it. Because they might, you know, Rockstober. accidentally say the other thing. But we won't let them do that. Rockstar. Rock Rockstar. I hear... Do you hear Bloss? He's like somewhere I, in the background. I, I always hear Bloss. Bloss is like over my left shoulder all the time in my life. That's how I live my life. He might be one of those voices in your head. You know how they talk about voices in your head and how people have said things to you and they just, you just, it's like negative thoughts and you got to get them out. Bloss might be like that. You think? He's a good thought. He's a he good is, thought. Oh, Although, good do you know one. how to get negative thoughts out of your head? From how? This is from Nalini Yoga. Um, you're just supposed to do this really, really fast and it shakes, it disrupts the flow of stuff that's cramming in your head. Um, I did a lot of Kundalini yoga every time I was pregnant, and I've been pregnant a lot. So yeah. there's you, there you go. You know, no one's ever said that on the show. We've talked a lot about meditation. We've talked a lot about um, different ways to clear your head. Because, you know, as performers, we, like, have all kinds of voices in our head that we're like, Shh, would you just shut up? I'm trying to do a one-person show here. Um, but uh, really, seriously, like this? like this like it just back and forth back and forth and it just it really works i have nothing in my head so it's, wor it's working <laughs> absolutely nothing that's the goal the goal is just to have nothing uh Empty. yeah just oh my god i actually i feel pretty good i feel like whoa like i'm kind of we're not allowed to say tripping on the show because we talked to some people that do um a lot of mushrooms and they were like offended by me saying tripping do you think yoga people would be offended? I, I, I do not traffic in offense. I'm, okay. Sticks and stones may break my bones. Like, have at it. You Whatever. Don't do it. You don't. don't do it. I like that. You're resilient. Okay, so I want to get down to this. You're from, you were originally Kingston. from Jamaica, right? Born and raised. And that's, in Jamaica, you would say it's rocks to above. So it's really good. Oh, the, oh really? All right. So you were born and raised there, and you grew up your whole young life there, all the way through, like, high school? Uh, so half and half. We had a little bit of a diaspora due to uh, sort of a horrible collapse of government, crime, and um, filth and corruption taking over, kind of like L.A. Yeah. And so we came to America in 76, uh -huh. which was America's big birthday. I was 11. You can now do the math. Wow. And, yeah. uh, and then my parents were divorced, though, so I would go back and forth. So, oh, um, so you spent time going I, back like, and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Miami is basically a glorified bus ride, mm -hmm. you know, on a plane. Yeah. 90 minutes uh, to Jamaica. So you went back and forth between Florida and Jamaica. And do you go back there now? Still? No, well, now because of the pregnancies, I have four kids and that's a lot of tickets. Um, uh, so we don't get to go home that often. Wow. Wow. So, okay. So when, when did you start acting? What, what? How did you catch that bug? Did you, do you always want to be an actor? No, so the crazy thing is that I, as a child, had a national commercial, but in a country of two, like it's not that big a deal. Yeah. But I did this huge spot for Tide, which ran for like 20 years, but we don't have residuals. Oh, no. um, I did get a detergent for my yeah. parents. And then um, I would do radio shows. I did a, a radio series for our national heroes, for our independents, um, because we didn't have television. I mean, we did, but television came on like at four in the afternoon and then signed off at eight. Yeah. So radio was our big entertainment. And so I was a actual radio actor and, and, and did the little TV that there was. And then I guess in American high school, I did, I did a lot of plays. But when I went to college, I was like, this is ridiculous to spend this money on um, on an acting degree. There's no point. No one ever does it. Um, no and then when I was all corporate um, as a graduate uh, in Miami working for the Rouse Company, 
E Entertainment Television. Do you remember them? They were the yes. precursor to movie time, or is it the other way around? Anyway, it's the other way they around. Had, yeah, it's the other way around. They had a nationwide screen test. Uh -huh. And so I auditioned in a mall and they flew me out here. I was one of the winners and there were 10 girls and 10 guys from 10 different cities and I stayed. And one of us became the voice of the Oscars, Gina Tuttle. Um, a couple of guys like I see here and there. It, it's, it, it's, we've had some longevity considering what a wacky beginning it was. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So were your parents actors or at all? Anybody you knew? Yeah. What made you no, suddenly no. go, I want to do that? Was it just you saw people on TV or you, or you got the Tide um, commercial and you're like, I love this? I, loved it. I just did it. And I loved, I think I was Tatiana in, in uh, Midsummer Night's Midsummer Dream when Night's I was 10. Midsummer Night's Dream, really? Um, but I just, I just, I loved it. My sister actually found a bunch. Did you, are you old enough that you would play with um, recorders? Remember the, oh, yeah. it wasn't an eight track, but the cassette recorder that was like. Oh my God, we play. did whole radio shows on it. My friend and I, yeah. we would just, I still have them actually, the recordings of them, because he gave me the tapes, the old tapes. And we sound like little chipmunks, but we do all the commercials and all that stuff and, you know, the interviews. Did you do that too? Yep. My sister and I did it. And we sound like little English chipmunks because we're talking that little Jamaican shows. So she, we have one that she found where oh. I'm talking, and this is 1975, 76. I mean, yeah. we're kids and there was no internet people yeah. and i'm talking about how i've gone out to los angeles to do a pilot and with my husband leaf garrett <laughs> lucky you leaf garrett man that was one of my yeah. favorites i had his you know oh. tiger beat posters on the wall when i was a kid it was the best. i mean didn't we all but how did all... i know about a pilot so i think yeah. i think kids arrive with stuff in their you heads you knew like about a pilot. pilot like you said pilot you actually said pilot I, in the recording i'm like leafy and i Came I would not know LA. anything about that when I was that yeah. age. That's hilarious. Don't know. Yeah. And then I put it away for a while. And then when they did this nationwide screen test, actually, um, a guy at Citibank who was an executive vice president of something muckety muck, mm -hmm. he said, you know, life is short. I now have a mortgage and kids and I can't do this anymore. Yeah. But you're young enough and unencumbered. You should go. This is it. This is your chance to try this. Yeah. Um, and so I did. Years later, funnily enough, he uh, quit the bank. They gave him a golden parachute. He opened a health food store and was in Cape Fear. No way. So he was like, he finally was like, wait a minute, I'm not too old to do this either. I'm just going to do it. You're, you're never too old. You're never too old. What's, no, I mean, you know, that's one of the themes on the show. You're never too old. There's yeah. a, either alive or there's dead. And that's yeah. it. Oh, well, there's mostly dead. There's, There's mostly. mostly do, you, do you think there are more dead people than there are alive? There are a, a lot of dead inside. Oh my God! Yes. Yes. Oh wow. How? Okay. So, how do you inspire yourself to creativity? Do you have? I, you said you did yoga. Um, do you do anything else to inspire cre only, creativity? Only when pregnant. Only, only when pregnant. Do the yoga. <laughs> you only do it when I you're pregnant. Time. <laughs> You have four That's kids. That's four years of yoga right there. Yeah. Um, inspired, like I don't get, you know, I, like I said, I had four kids. And so yeah. there's never a not creative moment. Somehow yeah. you're trying to make shit up and to get through life anyway. Yeah. Um, and I try to, I mean, the amazing thing about these little tools yeah. is that you can do so much. I mean, I can make little videos. I can cut together things. I can film myself. I can, you know, uh, now we're doing a lot of self tapes, um, yeah. but I can write, I can do all those things mm -hmm. if I get off my duff and do it. Yeah. What do you do to light your fire? You know what I mean? Like sometimes you have to set some kind of a deadline. You have to do something that, you know, makes you, you did a one person show. How did you go about yeah. doing that? How did you, did you set a deadline say, I'm going to be doing a show in this theater at this time? Uh, or did you slowly got, develop it? I got bullied. <laughs> you got bullied into doing it. I, I was sort of, so it's always been, you know, like Bloss is on this side. Well, on this side, it's yeah. always been like, you should do a one-on-one show. By the way, yeah. the best one-woman show I ever saw, the first one I ever saw was Jennifer Lewis at this little house off Melrose. I think it was called Off Melrose. Uh -huh. And she was a 
amazing. Just really? amazing. She was an amazing Jennifer Lewis. Uh, oh, you know, man. mentor implies she knew who I was, but she was yeah. just an inspiration. And uh, and then Claudia Cher blown sideways through life. Was oh yeah, so amazing. Oh yeah. So it's always been in my head. And yeah. then Julia Jeffers, who's a fellow actress, who's an mm -hmm. amazing woman. One of her gifts is that she sort of midwife's one person shows for people. Oh. And I would see her talking about them all the time and it'd be like one day, but yeah. the thought was daunting and horrifying. And when you said like an hour and a half, yeah, totally daunting. And then she called or texted me one day and said, would you do just 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. Will you write just 15 minutes? And so it was during lockdown and yeah. she, made me accountable. And that's the thing, right? If there's no accountability, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. She was like, so tomorrow you're going to give me the scene by scene breakdown. And then the next day you're going to give me, and I was like, ha, ha, ha. Wow. but I did it. Yeah. And, and so now the next step is to sort of expand it and finish it. Yeah. But it was terrifying and beautiful. Like childbirth. Like childbirth. Do you think you'll ever take it to like Edinburgh or something like that? Like what's your goal with it? I sort of, I, I'm a blown sideways through life girl. I don't know if I don't really. <laughs> do you goals, really, do you, uh, you don't set goals? You just kind of go. Well, I mean, you I have can't. to. Well, I did. Yeah. Yeah. To be, so, okay. So moved out to LA and was mm -hmm. like, and when I win my Oscar, here's my speech. Yeah. Like that right. was the goal. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, I kind of need to feed myself. Yeah. And then um, it was, hey, this is really fun. I really like to keep making this insurance. And then I just, there's not a good way. One, my manager actually at the time said, I know people whose lives aren't changed by being parents. Mm -hmm. I don't like those people. Um, <laughs> and I was like, ah, good point. So my babies are 17. So I'm just about to be able to, you know, flip the camera and look this way for a second. Yeah. So. I haven't had a goal theater wise or performance wise for a long time. I just like telling stories and having people hear stories and feel that they're not alone. And I do that, you know, either by being a team mom or running for office or doing comedy. I finally went back and did stand up. That's first what I want to hear about years. stand up. I figure, yeah. right. You're doing stand up, right. Yeah. And how yeah, was it? Was, that was horrible. It was like falling off a bicycle, right? Like you think the funny thing is, I mean, not funny, it's stupid. But when I first came here and, you know, got my backstage West and there was yeah. like, you can come do an open mic night at the yeah. Laugh Factory. And now I can't remember which one is comedy store. Which one's on the corner? So one of them. Yeah. I think it was the Laugh Factory. Yes. Yeah, that's the one on the corner. So I went. Yeah. And it's, you wait, like you're the, you're just the person who signed up on the street. So you're like the last person and you go up at like one in the morning. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the person who was before me in line, cause I was number 10, they took 10 people, uh -huh. um, waited for me. So it was me and that person and like two drunks and the owner. And speaking of voices in your head, the owner was like, come back in six weeks. What I heard yeah. was you suck. Don't ever do this again. Isn't that interesting how we do that? Like somebody will say something to us and we like process it in a bad way when it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's totally like, happened to me. Literally, my son was an amazing basketball player and yeah. um, one of his high school games, he played against Shaquille O'Neal. And after the game, Shaquille says to him, you're going to play ball in college. You're amazing. And we're like, oh my God. And then we get in the car and he's like, well, Shaquille said I shouldn't play anymore. What? Yes. And See, that's exactly we it. Like, what? How did he say I that? <laughs> How yeah, did he yeah. possibly say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we hear it. Like the other day, I, I, I was with two friends, and th they had two friends that popped up. And I just didn't know them. And I was like, who are these people? And I could see those people start to get offended. Like I could see it on their face. Because... I think because I, it was like I was saying, I don't know these people. What are they doing here? You know what I mean? Like right. we can just take stuff in all kinds of different ways. It's so it's interesting. It's all from the inside. Like whenever my kids talk about it, and you know, sometimes we talk about it, there's a lot yeah. of talk about race and stuff. And I'm like, when someone looks at me funny, yeah. I assume they're constipated. <laughs> like, that's a horrible feeling. Yeah, that's feeling. a good idea. And so you <laughs> have to, idea. it's not ever about you. Mm -hmm. And even when it is about you, it's mostly about their response to you that has something to do, right? Like, it's never about you. 
Yeah. Which is why you guys talking about therapists is so funny because you know why people are therapists. Why? I was, why? I was a psychology major. Yeah. Because you had such a screwed up childhood that you're like, I trying to, to fix work it, it out, Just trying to work it out through other people. Exactly. I mean, I do you think it. actors are like that too? A little bit. I mean, yeah. It, when you scratch the surface and you peel the onion, mm -hmm. you're like. Oh my God, your parents took you around the country in a van and exposed you to predators so that you could get a series when you were six. Yeah. And now I'm holding you up as a paragon of virtue and child rearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So, okay. So you. Yeah, no, Shaq, Shaq would never say that. Like I heard him. My husband yeah, heard him. Of course he did. Uh, the, the kid was just. <gasps> yeah. yeah. So, okay, so I want to ask you this. You've done a lot of television. You've done a lot of movies. You must be really good at auditioning. Um, what do you do um, as far as auditioning goes? You know, because that stuff goes on in the audition room. Not so much anymore because we're doing these remote things, but eventually you end up in the room, you know, if you're going to get the part. Um, how are you with that? You know, seeing how, like, the casting directors respond and all that stuff. Um, I think I used to be really good at it naturally. So again, why yeah. I said it's really stupid to take a, you know, acting as a college major. Yeah. I just, I never had a class Yeah. and I was just me. And then the voices creep in and you start thinking maybe I should not be me. Yeah, me right. I think that's the main thing. Cause we were just talking about one person shows and how the more personal you are, the better. But then you go right. into an audition room and you're like, I don't want to be me. I want to be the person they want me no, to be. I want to be this other person. Um, yeah. I think the best thing I ever did, both from an acting standpoint and from a mental health standpoint, mm -hmm. was to take um, our, my dearly departed friend, Sam Christensen's, pro do his process. So Sam Christensen, um, I think it's still called Sam Christensen Studios, and Ken, Cortland, and some other people are running it. Mm -hmm. But it was, he was a casting director, and he saw all these incredibly talented friends of his not getting work. And he yeah. was like, how... How is that possible? And it comes from us thinking we need to be something else. And his big thing was charisma is public self-acceptance. Charisma right? is public self-acceptance. I like that. I like that. So it doesn't matter who you are because we're all incredibly unique. Like I have two of my kids are identical. Monozygotic twins. They are different people. Yeah. What did you and say about twins? I missed that part. Yeah, well, people call it identical, but I'm, uh, I'm sorry, if you can tell, I'm a nerdy stickler. Yeah, I And like they it. are monozygotic. Okay, what's There's that mean? There's no such thing as identical. Mono, one, zygote, one zygote that split. Oh, so okay. It's like, the, it's like the scientific term. Yeah. Rather yeah. than the it's, layman term. The dumb yeah, because, people term. Yeah, because they're not identical. They're, they're, not, they're individuals. You want them to be individuals. You want them to grow as individuals. Exactly. And it's not that people are dumb. It's just that people are busy. So like I have friends with boy girl twins. That yeah. People would see them in the pink and the blue and be like, are they identical? <laughs> Except for the penis. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, whatever. So, you know, people yeah. are people. We all have things in our heads. Yeah. Um, and so what Sam did was say, not that you couldn't play roles based on who you were, but if you bring your authentic self and approach each character as who you are, like, so it turned out mm -hmm. that people look at me and see sort of overwhelming, energetic, bossy, determined, mm -hmm. which all those words made me feel horrible and sad. And I was like, but I want people to think I'm pretty. Yeah. yeah but every one of those words that is very clear to people has a flip side. So I'm also determined and, um, you know, willing to stand up and fight and the quarterback and the head cheerleader. So you have to find a way to accept and integrate all the parts of yourself so nothing freaks you out. And the other important thing he pointed out was that literally you can stand there silently before you even slate People know who you are. So in the old days, he used to have people go to LAX to the airport with a list of adjectives to say, like, can you check off these adjectives about that apply to this person? And I took the class with my husband and some strangers. I could not tell which checklist came from my husband and which came from strangers. Really? They could tell. You, so you're saying people are a good judge of character right away, or at least they get it. What you're like. They really. get it. Yeah. 
And now they can choose to not like who you're like, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean everyone's going to like you. Some people, but no, for me, knowing that some people found me overwhelming mm -hmm. without me even being overwhelming yeah. was very calming. And like, now I know how to approach people because then I can say, I know a bit much, but bear with me. And it's just like doing improv. So Bloss and I met, um, yeah. and Camilla as well, doing improv. Yeah. You have to establish the scene in the first 10 seconds so the audience can go, oh, okay, I can watch. And I can it's also why comedians come up and they kind of tell you who they are first so that you're like, you have some context and you're like, oh, okay, now I know who this person is. So now I can relax. Yeah. 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 And also in teaching, you know, when you teach somebody something, you have to say, look, this is what I'm going to teach you. So you don't just start right into the teaching because people are like, oh, I don't know what's going on. They're like disoriented. So I think yeah. probably you have to do that with yourself. I think probably um, maybe for you at the airport, people might be able to look at you and tell you, you know, what, what you're like. Maybe because you're a little bit more open than other people. Some people can be very, you yep. know, closed off. Everybody. Right? You think everybody, everybody, everybody they could tell? Everybody in this room. He's done it. He's done it with hundreds of people. Wow. It's amazing. Just quite like, and by the way, you're not allowed to talk. So someone else would have the paper. Oh, they're like, look at this say, person. What they're, what are they like? And they're like, oh, well, they're bossy and this and that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's And he would have the positive and the negative of each. Yeah. Of each well, that's the thing so too, is we have to like, just like the thing with uh, Shaq is like, you have to take the, take it in and like look at all the positives of it and not assume the negative because right. that doesn't do you any good. It doesn't really do you any good unless it's like a, you know, your coach or something who is telling you, you know, you, you, I don't know, you blink your eyes too much or whatever it is, <laughs> you know, but you Ma know. I have Marty Feldman eyes. Like that's a, you know, Marty <laughs> Feldman. I love Marty Feldman. He was one of my favorites. Was what was what were the There's shows that you liked when you were growing up, like movies and TV shows? What were your well, so influences? It, because of the Jamaica small TV thing. Yeah. I grew up like in the 50s. So like the Ghost and Mrs. Mirror uh -huh. um, was, a, was a favorite. Yeah. Um, oh my so God, you were like back in time. You felt like with the, with yeah. the TV and stuff, you were a little behind. Yeah, because they, they only what america got yeah you know, like america sent us their leftovers yeah so the one with um with mrs beasley and the the oh the uh, family affair i love that show too it was a fun one and then just now when you were showing mary tyler moore i have been introducing my kids to um we watched all the pilots of uh flipper and um i dream of genie and mary tyler moore they haven't seen yet but those like and really my absolute heroes were lucille ball and carol burnett yeah just oh they were great in the howard and Ronan says laughing, what hump yeah go ahead speaking of the, laughing well our corman and conway oh my god were, were they hilarious or, and that they would like heart. crack up we call that corpsing when you start laughing in a scene because all of a sudden the characters become corpses because you're just actors just laughing your asses off yeah, I love right. that. I love that. Um, yeah, so uh, Howard said, what hump Marty Feldman? That must be from Young Frankenstein, right, where he's the assistant. I used to love it. He said, Marty Feldman said that he um, didn't know his eyes could move independently until he fell asleep one time in a chair, and one of the eyes just kind of sunk down like this on its own, and then he realized he could do that. <laughs> it was like an extra new tool for him as an actor. I'm going to have to check. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you can move your eyes independently, you, you, it's the, the road is wide open for you. It's just open. Just, and so, Broken oh, your question Steve. was, am yeah. I good at auditioning? Yeah. Um, no. I mean. What? Nobody's, well, nobody's good at it until they get the job. And then yeah. you're like, oh, they must be really good at it. But it's a crap skill. It has nothing to do with the job at hand. Do you think right? it's like, completely different from the job? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. I kind of agree and, with you. And the other thing is, like, so when I started and I was like the young hottie, yeah. um, I did a lot of series regular auditioning. Uh -huh. And I yeah. was always amazed that they didn't do a little, hey, you got anything in your past we should know about? Like, is your dad a serial killer? Like, I kind of felt like it was a big job. Like, you're going to be giving someone the keys to the NBC kingdom. Yeah. Would yeah. You like to know? Didn't they ask you stuff like that? Or don't they do some kind of background no. check? No. You walk in and you do the thing. And then I, that one, I remember actually I did um, 
It was Frogmen with O.J. Simpson. Oh, well, well there's there's a, they should have done a background check on him, maybe. <laughs> right. And they, they literally walk outside. There's like three of us and they hand me the NBC hat and they're like, welcome to NBC. Wow. Cool. Did you have to go to like down to the basement and there was a bunch of people with suits on and, and all this and they get, made you sign contracts or what, what was the process when you got like a network, you know, So the crazy thing regular. about network hmm. stuff, which I haven't done in like 25 years, yeah. but how it used to work is you had to sign all the paperwork and agree to your series contract. Basically, you had to know how much money you were going to lose if you screwed this up. Yeah. which I always thought was like, why do you think horrible. they do that just to pressurize you to see if you can handle it? I don't know. You know, maybe that is what I bet. So what I would do with my agent, or maybe they're um, just unaware is, of how actors are freaking yeah. out. Yeah. I would just go and I'd be like, don't show me. Don't yeah. tell me. Yeah. Just should just peek, just like cover up everything. And I'll just sign my name I'll just, <sighs> and then I'll go. Yeah. So, so you didn't fun, look at you know, it. That, well, that's like a, a method, right, that you had. Okay, now that, did you have other methods before you went in the room to like calm your nerves or do anything like that? Like you're sitting in the room with a bunch of people that look like you and you're maybe, maybe you've got like a, it's a show you really want to be on. I just always was like, I want to be the best embodiment of the character right now. Like I'm getting to do a show right now. Yeah. Right now. That's, yeah. I have an audience. <laughs> Who doesn't you just, love You're audience? like, I have a chance to perform right now and that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the best mindset, totally. And then you do it, and then you walk away. Um, yeah. I'm going to bring on Blas Lorenzo. You know this guy, Blas Lorenzo? Yay! Um, I, I, hopefully he's dressed, because sometimes yeah, sometimes he comes on, and he's got no shirt on, and it's like he's trying to show off his abs or something like that, and he's acting like he's like, oh, my shirt fell off. You know, he's one of those people. I think he's like a, an exhibitionist or something like that. So I'm just... You think? <laughs> I think that might be true. All right, let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Ladies and gentlemen, Blas Lorenzo. There he is. All right. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? It's good. I Oh, hi, Rox. No, that was for Did Connor. you know that it's... Sorry. I was, oh, I was blowing a kiss to her because she had a comment. Oh, that's nice. For you? Eh. Okay. Forget about it. Put uh, the, give that I, kiss um, back. I, I, you know, it wasn't my idea, but I promoted the Rockstober, so I don't know, whatever. I'm no, glad no, I do. I'm, yeah, you know, the, he's really got your back. The thing about Bloss is he's got your back. He's like a great, like, promoter. He's a great advocate for other artists, and then he's a great artist himself, so he understands what guys, it's like. Guys, right? guys, I got your back, and I got your front. Oh, no, no. Yeah, and, uh, oh, 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 oh. No, no, oh, oh man. Oh, come on, Bloss. Where, where yeah, did you Joe, two meet? Joe, what? Joe, you like that. Where um, did we meet? Yeah. Oh, this is a good story. All right, let's hear it. This is a good story. Do it. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll do my version. Let's see if you have you different stories. Me. Maybe you have yeah. different yeah, stories. Yeah, let's see. You tell me how close I am. Okay. Yeah. So, first of all, uh, I used to study with Geo Hartley. Geo Hartley, uh, he had a theater on Highland. It was called the uh, Theater Geo. And he was an acting coach. And uh, when I first came into town, I studied with him because uh, I, w I got with a, an agency that knew my family and knew people I knew. But I was suggested to take his class. I, I was in the G Gio Hartley's class. And we would do these, uh, you know how uh, actors would do um, uh, casting presentations. Like you do scenes for yeah. network, for industry people, right? Yeah. So we, you get scenes in. So uh, Gio set me up with a scene, He, you know, uh, for this one particular uh, sh oh showcase that's what it's called showcase yeah. right so it was doing the showcase on on Melrose Avenue and I think it was called the Fig Tree Theater back then mm -hmm. and uh, I did my uh, you know we did the, the showcase and everything and you know out in the lobby out in the street sidewalk and everybody's talking to each other and agents and managers are talking to you maybe casting directors are you know talking to you and stuff like that and your mm -hmm. agent and your managers there and they're like ooh what's going on it's a whole networking thing right yeah so after the showcase I'm doing my scene and uh, the actors were usually out first, and then the audience comes out yeah. uh, into the lobby area, in the sidewalk. And Roxanne comes out, and there's this, this followed by a, a gentleman. That, uh, I could say he was an older gentleman, actually. Yeah. And she comes out, and I'm standing near the door, and she walks right up to me. And she goes, "Hey, that was really good. That you were really good." She gives me a compliment, right? And I was uh -huh. like, "Oh, thank you very much." We introduced each other on Blas Lorenzo. And she walks up. So I agree. And um, I must say, back then, when uh, Roxanne was quite uh, 
uh, uh, now it's just she I was quite know. I attractive. Going now. I don't want to get uncomfortable. Okay. Well, wait, back attractive. then she was quite attractive. She seems quite you know, attractive she's now. Still, she's still very what attractive. What the hell is that, I just man? Meant that. It's like a weird. No, I just meant that. It's. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. What. It's very rare that pretty girls come up to me. And, oh my god! Uh, I, I'm cutting you off. I'm cutting you off. No, no, no. I want to hear no, Roxanne's no, side of the story. Yeah. No, I know what he's Unless, saying. Um, I was single. Oh, what that's he's what he's saying. Okay. Like, okay. Now. Right, right. I think that's good. Yeah. You know, this is an example of like how you hear it. And you take it and you take it in for the positive, you know, because Bloss, it comes out right, of his mouth exactly. in a kind of rough, kind of raw, kind of unformed thought. Well, and well, you have to I like wanted, translate originally it. I wanted to say, but originally I wanted to say she was stunning, but I felt like at that age, when we first met, she was very attractive. And I was like, oh, this pretty girl's walking up to me right now. Oh, is she looking at me and the guy behind me? And she comes and gives me a compliment. And I said, yeah. thank you. And we talked and we exchanged names and we talked and everything. And then the man comes around her shoulder comes around the other side and I was like, Oh, hi. Uh, I'm blah. He was like, Oh yeah, you were, you were very good. You know, he pays me a compliment yeah. too. And I look at her and I look at him and I look at her and her eyes are going, he's, I'm not with, him. I'm not, I'm not with him. Oh he's God. a friend. Like the eyes are saying that. Oh. And so what happened was we switched God, numbers. I don't and know. I talked to her later on. Oh my God. I talked God, to her later on. So I called her, you know, she was looking, this at the time she happened. was looking for an agent. She, I think either she just got into town or she was just shopping around acting classes or something. So we had talked and I had to ask her, I was like, is that your boyfriend or something? She goes, oh, you mean the guy I was with at the thing? I go, yeah, no, 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 he's just a friend. I, I, is, I don't know if I remember this correctly, but I think he was a manager don't. that wanted to represent. I don't think you re re like remember any of this correctly. I want to hear Roxanne's Wait, turn. Let okay. me finish, let me finish. Jason so, says it's Roxanne's turn. Really, I'm listening really to the hummingbirds. Yes, Okay. What? Just, okay, close it up. That's and what I told you. I want to no, hear her up, version, up, too. Up, let me hear. So, 15 seconds. So we stayed in touch for a little bit in the earlier years. Of, you know, we were sharing information. And I told her about my agency, blah, 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 and Geo Hartley's class. And then we didn't talk for a while. Some years went by. Uh, I'd say this is like maybe three or four years, two or three years or whatever went by, maybe a couple of years. And then our improv group, Caught in the Act, which was directed by Jay Lacopo. Bring it home. Bring we it home. We were auditioning talent. We were auditioning talent. Robert. Jay and I. Reel it in, reel it in. And Robert, Robert, stand-up comedian, yeah. very good stand-up, very funny guy. Um, he was very good at like finding talent and saying, hey, I yeah. found this person here and this person, you know, blah, blah, blah. We should see their, and uh, during the audition, the, the few days we were auditioning people, we didn't have a studio or anywhere to go, you know, so we were just doing it out of Jay's living room. You know I mean? Oh, there's and, fireworks. The fireworks so, indicate that it's, I know, that you're done. You're I know done that, that might be talking. awkward for, for a person to five, show up at someone's apartment. Four. Three. Oh, listen to this. Two. Listen to this. Well, Roxanne comes in. One. And I'm sitting on the couch. And Jay and I are sitting on the couch. And Roxanne comes in. Robert goes, this is Roxanne Beckford, right? And he hands her, the yeah. answers, her, her, her headshot. And she walks in. And first thing she does, she goes, boss, boss, what are you doing here? And I go, oh, Roxanne. Hey, Roxanne, what's up? And you know what I mean? Like, we knew each other from before. Oh she acknowledged me. Jay and Robert are going, how do you know this? I don't think you can st end oh, the story. Just end the story and say, and then we and did she, improv she together for in. years. Yeah. She, uh, she auditioned. She, she did. Dude, we put her in scenes. All three of us rotated and did scenes with her. And yeah. she murdered it. Okay. She was so good. Okay, that's and, it. You know, that's like when it. We're Stop. People, Knock it off. Wait, when we're reviewing people, to gonna, people. I muted him. I totally muted him. <laughs> you know how actors are, you just want to hear about yourself like all the time. So I didn't know. Bother me. Okay. Um, now I want to hear what mostly, you have to say. No, yeah. that's, that's mostly. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh -huh. Um, I didn't know, like, uh, yeah, it was a thing. It was outside. And I think the guy, Bloss, I think it was T. Smith. Mm -hmm. Cause he was, um, a writer on a different world. And he was like a big, a giant avuncular man. But I just, the implication seems to be that I was saying I'm not with him because I was trying to connect with you. I think we, I remember him being like, do you want me to protect you from this crazy guy? Oh, um, yeah. But, That's what the but guy mostly, was saying. <laughs> the guy was yeah. like, do you want me to protect you from this crazy guy? That's a quite a different story than the, uh, but the other one. But it still ended up well. Oh, and he's okay. still telling it. Um, but then he ended up at my <laughs> wedding. Um, I was wow. at his wedding. Kamala, actually, uh, I wow. lent me my necklace for something borrowed. You know, something. Wow. Something, and, something blue, something old, something new, something borrowed. Something did you give blue. it back? 
Or do you still have it? I did, and I really didn't want to because it was beautiful. Oh, yeah. She's got some great jewelry. Great jewelry. I'll tell you that. But I see Bloss over there talking. Let's just check in and see what he might be saying. We're like, she's great. We got to have her. So (laughs) He's still telling the story. You know what I mean? He's still telling the story. I'm trying to say this. I'm trying to say this, though. I'm trying to say You know how hard it is to get uh, like a pretty uh, person to do improv and do it well? Yeah. It's a very hard thing, bro. It's very hard. And you got so three of them. The, <laughs> yeah. Three of That's you what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I triple threat. I'm to with you guys. We got so fortunate, dude. Kamala, yeah. Carrie, Roxanne. Yeah. It, it was like, I mean, there were the girls coming and going. And, and, but who can listen? Who takes the time out to listen in the scene and be yeah. in the moment? You know, that's what improv is about. Listening and give and take and yeah. endowing people and moving it forward, not negating and all that. And it was really, it was like, we were really into, in, into that kind of thing. And Roxanne and Kamala, they just stepped up, bro. It was, oh man, it was great, dude. It's so great to be. You, I wish you had some like people. film of that or something. Talented. Or some, some, it's, you know, it's so that? ephemeral. That's the thing about yeah. improv. It just, it just dissipates. And I don't think it's ever as good when you look back when, but everybody is participating the audience is with you the everybody's with you yeah. and if, if i could have gotten paid for the rest of my life to do one thing it would have been that i think like we should all i think we should all do some sketches though um at some point for, Joe, Joe, have Joe, show. We did long form we did long form improv bro long form where all the entire cast is on the stage creating yeah. a scene not a lot of people were doing that not a lot of improv groups were doing that they were doing gaming stuff and they were doing almost like exercises and stuff, you know? But yeah. we were doing long form improv. It was basically sketches improv? but improvised. Wait, was it long form what was improv? That? Was it long form <laughs> improv? Is that what you were doing? <laughs> I'm giving you shit today. Um, all right, you so. Know what, you know, what? it's good though. You know why? I'm telling you, dude, that era, that time when we were doing it, yeah. it was fantastic. Dude. We had great. the best. I mean, I love it. most of us went to Jamaica for Roxanne's wedding. And Roxanne's mom knows I, everybody in Jamaica, dude. She got I this, heard that was this, like a, uh, quite the affair. Hill. Was it Round Hill? She got the Round Hill Resort, bro. We all had our own houses. Our own, really? not, a, not a cabana, a house. My house had a swimming pool. Silly and I had a swimming pool. Everyone would come over and swim in our house. I heard I'm Round Hill. You know, Kamala, like, when I met Kamala, she's always like, we got to go to this place called Round Hill. It's the greatest place ever. Oh we got to go to Jamaica together. We couldn't, couldn't, couldn't afford to go to Round Hill. I hear it's like there, a, Mick Jagger seven, goes there and stuff. Days, yeah. I think Mick yeah, Jagger was ma- one of the houses there. My, my, mom, uh, my mom hooked us up because we could never afford to go back. And yeah. we actually, I, I took the kids once. We were visiting family. And so we drove in and I was like, ta-da, this is where daddy and I got married. And they were like. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, bro. Everybody wants to go to Jamaica now. To bring everything full circle, my mom at this moment. Your mom? My mom at this moment is in Delhi. Oh, yes. I love Delhi. Except for her bag. Her carry-on bag is in Dubai. Yes, of course. Of course. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. That's her fault. Where else would it be? Where else would it be? I I was in Dubai. This little anecdote. I was in Dubai. We get out of the car with, with our luggage and everything. It's like a, it was like a bus. We get out, and all, my, my bag's not there. And I look, and I see somebody walking away with my bag, and they just thought it was theirs. And I had my computer. I had everything in this thing. And I see them way across there in Dubai, and I had to run and, like, chase them down. And I was like, this is my bag. And they were like, no, it's not. And this is my bag. No, it's not. And I finally was like, I finally just took it from her. I was like, yours is back there. And I just ran away. But, yeah. Anyway. Oh. Dubai, yeah, it's known yeah, for yeah. stealing luggage. A, a, yeah, right. Then I got arrested and, and I was in prison for multiple years. Yeah, I would have arrested you. Yeah. You look great, though. I, yeah. back. You know, it's good for the skin. <laughs> prison. Um, all right. Well, I got, we're going to have to end is the show. They, it's, it's time. Is that what they say? It's good for the skin? Yeah, it's great for the skin. Prison, of course. Mm. It's not good and for the, and the pec, other things. Right? Like, you, like a lot oh, of I working mean, out. Yeah, I mean, That's definitely. That's not a peck. What is that? That bicep. Is, is a bicep. Bicep. Yeah. I only know that because I was in prison. You know, oh. we knew all the, yeah, all the different muscle groups. All the muscle I groups? Bet. Oh, yes. That's scary and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thanks so much for being on the show, Roxanne. Bloss, as always, hey. wonderful stories. What? <laughs> that's you ask. Anyway, uh, Rox, it's Rocktober, it's Rockstober, right? Yeah. And we're doing Upside Down Show. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, do you have a scary 
if you have a scary horror story you want to share with us, pop in. We'd love to have you come in and tell a tell a horror story. Rocks October twenty third, the Upside Down show. We haven't quite worked it out yet, but it's uh it's a it's an it's an anti lunch therapy. It's an anti therapy show. Therapy. Upside down. I might, going, I might be emceeing something that day, but oh, Okay, we'll see. Know. You could even pre tape one. All right, so it's time now <laughs> to dance it out. I've got um I was gonna you know, I was gonna do a cover of Roxanne and then I thought, you know what, she probably hates that song. She's probably people oh probably God, sing that, that to her all the time. She's like, Oh song. God, not again. Somebody's gonna sing that stupid song. So I've got a Halloween song for us. It's from a lot people might know this band. It's a French band, they're called Broken Peach. And they, they every Halloween they dress up, they put makeup on. They do a classic song, Halloween song, and I got that for us to dance to. This is the dance break, Ross, Roxanne. We, we listen to a cover song, we dance it out, and then the show is over. Really appreciate you being on the show. I hope you'll come back again sometime soon. Um, Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It was awesome. Maybe, I will maybe say, I do I'll like have a better story. Yes. Yeah. What were we going to say? Um, Maybe I I'll have a better being story. Greeted by the Roxanne so... song when I came to America because it's about a prostitute. Yeah. But then um, I like the one from Moulin Rouge, which I did not oh. realize was Jose Feliciano singing Roxanne. Ooh. Yeah. Really? I used to it's like the. Fire. I used to like the old Police. You know that was kind of our era, right? It's yeah. almost better. Actually, it's my that favorite. One. Yeah. My well, favorite version, though, is yeah. uh, Eddie Murphy in 48 Hours. That was actually my favorite. He version. sings Roxanne as well, huh? Yeah. And the, his introduction, revealing his character, he's in prison. Oh, and he's wow. got Walkman on and he's singing it. Maybe we were in prison at the same time. Vernus, great to see Vernus. All right, everybody. Thanks for, all, for being here. Um, please, you know, pass around. There's a lot of great insights, a lot of interesting things. Remember to do this whenever. You're feeling crazy. I don't like it our already. New, our new therapy. Yeah, our it's new our new therapy. therapy. Yeah, All right. Then, I love it. What? Yeah. Oh, yes. That's the calming. That's the calming. I need some calming after Bloss's stories for sure. All right, here we go. Dance break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Broken pizza. <laughs> Everybody. Come. 